The other trend that is important to monitor is the structural trend. We're in a world where we are seeing increased deficiencies on the supply side. Demographics, an aging population, reduced immigration, uh, deglobalization or slower globalization uh, is another example of where an environment with increased fragmentation will lead to higher costs of goods and services going forward. And then the decarbonization, the greening of the economy, that's a massive uh, potential to increase inflation. So we have probably higher inflation over the structural medium term, but lower inflation as we navigate through that cycle. What that means for central bankers is they need firmer anchors. They cannot proceed just by looking at the data and being excessively data dependent. Mm. That's a big risk. We've seen it for the Fed. We've seen it for the ECB. We've seen it for other central banks where they focus too much on one specific data read, a payrolls report, a CPI report, an inflation expectations report. We know that inflation expectations are still well anchored. We know the economy, at least in the US, is slowing. So that's the type of environment where I would think the Fed should pause and start to wait to see the effect of prior tightening. Will it pause? Probably not this time. It'll probably proceed with one more rate hike. But I think it's going to maintain that flexibility for potentially still raising rates in June because it does not want to close the door to any further rate hikes. And importantly, it wants to maintain these rates at an elevated level. For you bring up